Hello everyone, welcome to the playlist of control system. In this video, I will be demonstrating an experiment on study of synchro pair characteristics. I have already prepared a lecture video on synchro. In that video, I have included definition, construction, working and applications of synchro. I request you, before watching this video, you can watch that particular lecture video so that you will be having better understanding. Okay. However, let us begin with the basics. Basically, synchro is an electromechanical device. It comprises of electrical part as well as mechanical part. The term synchro is a generic name for a family of inductive devices which works on the principle of rotating transformer or variable transformer. As you know that, synchro is having the same principle as similar that of induction motor and the transformer. Induction motor is also known as rotating transformer. Same principle will be obeyed by synchro. Moreover, we can say that synchro is an electromagnetic transducer. Why synchro is an electromagnetic transducer? Why? Because the synchro produces the output voltage depending on the angular position of the rotor. You can see that angular position is a mechanical quantity. Electrical voltage is basically an electrical quantity. That means Corresponding to angular position, we are able to get the electrical voltage. That means synchro is basically an electromagnetic transducer. The main components of synchro are synchro transmitter as well as synchro control transformer. These are the main segments of synchro. Basically, we are going to call synchro pair or error detector. It comprises of two components. First one is synchro transmitter and the second one is synchro control transformer. The combination of synchro transmitter and synchro control transformer is generally known as Synchro pair or error detector. Now what are the trade names of synchro? You can see that there are different trade names for synchro. The first one is Celsin, second one is Antosin, third one is Telesin. These are the trade names for the synchro. Now let me demonstrate the experiment on study of synchro pair characteristics. First and foremost thing, you have to rig up the circuit as per the given circuit diagram. Let's start how to do the connection first. As per the connection, we need to perform the back to back connection between the stator terminal of the transmitter to the stator terminal of the receiver. So S1 and S2 need to be connected first. Thereafter, you can connect S2 and S2. Later on, do connect S3 and S3 as shown in this manner. Now let's complete the connection between the rotor coil. So R1 and R1 has to be connected as, as in this manner. Similarly, R2 and R2 need to be connected in this way. Now supply has to be given to rotor coil. Now from here, it should be connected to R1. Similarly, from this point, it should be connected to R2. Polarity doesn't matter. Why? Because this is an AC supply. Side. Here we have. Now let's see the output of center tapper transformer. That is 31.76 volt. Then supply from the center tapper transformer need to be connected to the input of the kit as shown in the kit as shown in the circuit. You can observe here. Now let's start the demonstration. Let's take the first reading. Now what you are supposed to do is you need to maintain the rotor of the transmitter at zero degree as shown in this manner. Zero degree. Now the rotor position is at a zero degree of the transmitter. Now we have to measure the stator voltage. So, we need to measure the voltage between S1 and S2. You have to hold properly. Now, let us go back to multimeter. Multimeter gives the reading that is equal to 24.19 volt. Please note down in the table. Thereafter, you need to measure the voltage between S2 and S3. So, I have connected multimeter terminal in between S2 and S3, then I will be getting the reading of 
8.09 volt. Please note down in the table. And let me measure the voltage between S1 and S3. S1 and S3. So let us go back to multimeter and you will be getting the reading of 16.03 volt. Please note. The same reading has to be written over the table. At 0 degree, you need to measure the voltage between S1 and S2, then S2 and S3, and finally S3 and S1. One more important information. As the rotor of transmitter is at 0 degree, you need to measure the rotor of the receiver part. Now, the rotor of the transmitter part is at 0 degree. Now, let us look at what is the rotor angle of receiver part. Now, it is approximately 0 degree. So please note down, the transmitter rotor position is equal to 0 degree and corresponding receiver rotor position here. Now let me take the next reading, that is whenever the rotor of transmitter tends towards 30 degree. So what about the voltage of stator terminals and how about the position of the rotor at the receiver part. Now let me move on, uh, the transmitter rotor at 30 degree, as you can see the variation now the rotor of transmitter is equal to 30 degree. Now the rotor position of the transmitter is equal to 30 degree as you can shown here. Here at the same time you need to measure you need to measure the stator voltage that means Vs1, S2, Vs2, S3 and Vs1, S3. Vs1, S2 you can observe here. I have connected the multimeter terminal, let us move on to the reading. The voltage between V S1 S2 that is equal to 23.3 volt. Please note down in the table. Now let me move on. The second terminals like S2 and S3. So please connect the multimeter terminals. Now let's go back to the reading. That is equal to 17.86 volt. Please note down. Now let's move on the third reading. That means V S1 S3. I need to connect the multimeter terminals as shown in this manner. Now let's read out the reading from the multimeter that is equal to 5.44 volt. In parallel you are supposed to measure the variation of rotor position of the transmitter with respect to the rotor position of the receiver. So now the rotor position of the transmitter as I have varied it 30 degree. Whenever the rotor of the transmitter is 30 degree you need to measure the rotor of the receiver part that is approximately equal to 29 degree. So the rotor of the receiver is equal to 29 degree. Please note down in the table. In the same fashion, you need to vary the voltage like 30 degree, then 60 degree. You can observe the variation. As I am varying the rotor of the transmitter, uh, the rotor of the receiver also getting changed. Then I need to go for 90 degree, then I need to go for 120 degree till I need to repeat the step till 330 degree. At the same time, you need to measure the rotor position of the receiver side and the stator voltage terminal voltage. At the every steps you need to complete the table. Uh, this is this table is concerning variation of stator voltage for different rotor position. The second table is corresponding to analysis of receiver rotor position with respect to ta transmitter rotor position. You need to complete uh, for every change in transmitter rotor the table corresponding to angular position of the rotor. This is the transmitter input. It is varying from 0 to 330 degree. Then corresponding receiver output has been noted down over here. So this table is corresponding to the variation of rotor position at the transmitter with respect to changes in stator voltage. We are going to vary the rotor position from 0 to 330 degree at the step of 30 degree. Then correspondingly you need to tabulate all the data like Vs1, S2, Vs2, S3 and Vs3, S1. Once you complete the tabulation, you need to, per, you need to draw the characteristics of the synchro pair. That means you need to plot the graph of Vs1, S2, Vs2, S3 and Vs3, S1.